Hello, hello, friends. Good morning. Happy Friday, bloggers. I hope everybody's doing well. And I hope you're ready for real talk about making money with your blog. Let me tell you what this is not going to be. This is not going to be 10 hacks to make $1,000 a month in your first month blogging. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say never. I'm not going to say that can happen. But um, Here's a story that was sold to me when I first started blogging. I know I've shared this with you all before and allow me to share it again. So I found a blogging, like how to blog resource that I really trusted. And actually I still trust they're, they're a good resource, except for this one thing they said that I really took to heart. They said, you should be making thousand dollars a month good morning Paulette in your first six months blogging or you're doing it wrong <laughs> that's such horse shit y'all sorry if your babies are around plug their ears Aunt Kelly's here um yeah it's a long game it's a long game okay and some people do see really quick success and I think we see that and we think it's the norm but it's not it's the exception. And, um, and that's okay. So a lot of the stuff we need to do takes time, right? We're laying the, that foundation. We're laying bricks for, to, you know, to build our blogging empire, right? Read, see sign beh beside, behind me. <laughs> that's horseshit, y'all. We need that on a t-shirt. Okay. I can make that happen. I'm all about the merch. Um, yeah. Speaking of which. Crystal, I'm sorry, Willow, the other day said, <laughs> what did she say? Have a par preposterous launch. I love that. Y'all, every time you launch, I want you to have a preposterous launch. Willow, you are a genius. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Um, oh, okay. You guys don't forget to sign up for the Badass Blog Post Workshop. It's happening twice next week. You pick the day time that works best for you. It is free. You are going to write a blog post live with me. The link is in this video description. So I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff that I'll, I'll need to link out to. I'll update this video description with links. Um, money making stuff. Let's make some money. Who's saying hi? Oh God, where are the comments? Oh God, live chat. Here we go. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. So let's talk about how to make money. And I've got some examples for you guys. So before we actually talk about, oh, it's Amy. Hi, Amy. Before we actually talk about the, the, like tangible ways to make money. We need to talk about like your blog monetization strategy. Holy cow, Lisa, negative 14 in Chicago. Good God, Margaret, that is cold. I have like no, no concept of what that kind of cold is like. <laughs> it got down to like 20 here in the Pacific Northwest and we seriously shut down. Like everything just shut down. We had an inch and a half of snow and everybody was like, bye. <laughs> Hi, Akash. How are you? Am I saying that right? Akash or Akash? You let me know. Spell it out phonetically for me. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about your blog monetization strategy. That is, how is your blog going to make money? Traffic, page views, followers, subscribers, those are all vanity metrics if you are not leveraging them for income, right? You could have all the page views in the world, and if you do not have a plan on how to monetize those page views, they're just a vanity metric. I see a lot of bloggers chasing page views with no plan for turning those page views into a stream of re revenue. Now, chasing page views gets a lot of like bad juju, right? It's got like this negative connotation. There's nothing wrong with wanting to build up your page views, right? But you got to do something with them. I think that's where the negative part comes in, where it's chasing instead of like having a plan to to build up your page views and monetize said page views right that you have a strategy versus you're just like <laughs> going balls to the wall right page view flack yeah <laughs> 
yeah, it really depends. Um, chasing page views for no reason, yeah, not so great. But again, it's not the worst thing in the world because once you have those page views, it opens up options for you to then strategize. So if you're a person who's been building up all these page views and you have not monetized yet, that's okay. And in fact, you're like way ahead of a whole bunch of other people who don't have those page views yet, right? So uh, say it with me. Again, I feel like we say it every week. We don't write blog posts for no reason. Yes, I, blogger, solemnly swear I will not write blog posts for no reason. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're going to write those blog posts. We're going to rank in organic search results and we're going to get that traffic. And then we have, because we wrote that blog post for a reason and we put a call to action in there or it's already monetized with ads or whatever, that blog post is going to work to move our business forward. Lisa says, I'm still figuring out how to analyze them, like look, what to look for each month and come up with a plan. I document the page views, but I have yet to been, be able to turn that into a strategy. Okay, well, we can talk about that, right? We're going to talk about uh, different ways you can monetize your blog. Um, important, monetize your blog in more way than one. You don't have to do it all right out the gate. So if you are a brand new baby blogger, you can focus on getting your monetization strategy for one income stream down pat and then move on to the next, right? And get that one down income pat. And so you have two streams then, right? So let's say at first you want to do ads and then you want to do affiliates or maybe you want to do affiliates first and then ads, right? You want to have those multiple income streams. So think back to January 2020 and let's say we have two bloggers. They're in the same niche and they're consistently making $3,000 a month or more from Amazon affiliate income, right? Okay, so we've got our two imaginary bloggers. We'll call them Jim and Pam because <laughs> I love me some office. Okay, so both Jim and Pam poured a ton of effort into SEO and traffic is steady, right? Life is looking pretty good. Then COVID-19 comes around. And Amazon slashes affiliate commissions from 8% to 3%. That actually happened. Okay. Jim was only monetizing his blogs with Amazon affiliate income and feels devastated watching his income plummet from $3,000 a month to $1,000 a month overnight. Yikes. Jim's like, shoot, there goes my vacation in Tahiti. Pam, on the other hand, super smart. She isn't celebrating the income loss, but she's built up evergreen core sales to a solid $2,500 a month. Or she has ad income revenue that brings in a solid $2,500 a month. So she knows she can weather the setback, right? So it's all about those multiple income streams. And sometimes that takes time to build up and that's okay. It doesn't have to happen all at once. Okay, so employing various monetization methods is really important. So let's talk about monetization methods. Ads. <laughs> I want to talk about ads first because ads get a bad rap. And they've almost become like a dirty word in blogging circles. Like that leaves like a sour taste in your mouth. <laughs> I don't monetize blog feedy with ads because one traffic is not my source of income from blog feedy. There's not traffic over on blog feedy. That's not how I monetize the blog feedy business, right? It's just not part of my monetization strategy. It doesn't mean that ads are good or bad. Ads are not inherently evil. Can we all get that through? Let that sink in a little bit. When you put ads on your blog, you are not selling out. Okay. <laughs> um, so I don't monetize with ads myself. I do know a little bit about them. From what I've heard, AdSense usually isn't worth it. I can't say that as a blanket statement. I have seen people make AdSense work, but most of the time I see people signing up for AdSense and literally getting pennies. Like they're they're literally getting like under a dollar, right? Um 
you need, I've heard around 10,000 sessions per month to apply for ads that pay well, like Monumetric. Uh, but Ezoic will take you pretty much from the get-go. So income school, uh-oh, it says I've been interrupted. Are you guys still with me? Is everybody still there? <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> Blink twice if y'all can hear me. I think I'm back on. Can you guys hear me? Okay, great. Uh, all right. So, Ezoic uh, will take you pretty much from the get go. And income school was just saying that they recommend like around a thousand page views per month. You can go ahead with Ezoic. Okay, we're back on. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so lots of respectable bloggers can make consistent passive income from ads. Our good friend, team captain, Amy is cleaning up with ads. Totally cleaning up with ads. Um, so see Amy if you want a <laughs> case study. Um, and it's just sad to see people leave all that money on the table just because somebody else told them that blogs were bad or not blogs, ads, sorry. So the ads are available to brand new bloggers. Um, AdSense, maybe not. Ezoic, maybe around a thousand page views per month, which I know when you're first sounding, starting out sounds like a ton, but it's really not. And with like concerted SEO efforts, you can get there really quickly. Super promise. So of course, uh, for ads to work, you'll need a lot of click throughs to your blog. So make sure you get good at writing headlines. <laughs> um, you know, make make headline writing a consistent part of your blog post writing routine. Write lots of headlines for each blog post, and pretty soon you will get really good at headline writing. So if you write 15 to 20 different headlines and really practice making them juicy, putting in clickable words in there, putting in emotion words in there, uh, then you will get better at it. I super promise. Yeah, good. I'm glad you liked the Sinfully Sexy Headlines course. Yeah, I have a whole course on it. That's how important it is. <laughs> I have a whole course on it. Um, okay. So the argument against ads is that ads slow down your site. This is the argument against. I'm not saying it's right. Ads slow down your site. Note the air quotes. They weaken your brand. Notice the air quotes. Ads take away from the unit user experience. Notice the air quotes. Okay, Amy, you tell me, have ads slowed down your site? Like to the point where it affected the user experience or weakened your brand or made people jump off the page? So I'm just, I'm going to call bullshit on the blanket statement that ads weaken your brand and take away from the user experience. As long as you do the ads in a non sleazeball way and have thought them out as part of your monetization strategy, there's nothing wrong with using them to monetize your blog. Here's why they get a bad rap. Okay, I did a little, I put up a, a little thing here for y'all. I'll show you. Uh, add to stream. All right. Can y'all see this? Okay, so this, this is what a blog post looks like, right? Body of your blog post, body of your blog post. And then we have a cute little ad. Amy said, they do slow it down a little bit, but it hasn't affected my traffic. Boom, there you go. So yes, the ads took a little bit of a toll on the site speed, but not enough to actually affect anything, right? So if the traffic doesn't go down and your income goes up, why not? <laughs> okay, and then, so here's the right way to do ads, the wrong way to do ads. This is every time I'm trying to read a recipe. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay. And um, this is just an example. This wasn't actually Mediavine. I just pulled this off of a another website and plopped it on the text for an example. So I don't know if Mediavine actually would do that. But um, right. So bad, good. There's a right way and a wrong way to do ads. And Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can control the amount of ads that you put on your blog. Is that correct? 
All right. So, ads aren't bad. Give them a shot. Take a chance on me. And then as far as it, like, weakening your brand, I mean, if you decide that it actually is weakening your brand, you can take them off later, right? <laughs> just because just because you have ads on there once doesn't mean you have to have them on there forever. Yeah, there you go. Amy says the ad companies are usually very good about helping you with ad placement issues. Yeah, right. So if you're like, hey, this is showing up over my recipe and people can't read it, um, they'll help you. What's erasure, Paulette? Erasure? Is that something to do with erase, erasing things? <laughs> anyway, okay. So let's say your main monetization strategy is mid to high end pay products or like high end coaching packages. Um, then it might not make sense to have ads on your site. But also, if that's the case, you you probably aren't really doubling down on blogging anyway. So the example I like to use is James Wedmore. James Wedmore doesn't have ads on his site, but he's also not a blogger. <laughs> but he's selling like super high end coaching, right? It wouldn't make sense for him to have ads on that site. If there are so many ads that your visitors cannot consume the content, again, yeah, that could weaken your brand. It definitely hurts your user experience. If the ads themselves are sketchy, <laughs> right? If you've got like, I don't know, like mini, an ad for mini thins, right? Those diet pills or something. If they're taking a considerable toll on your site speed, like actually a noticeable toll, and it's it's hurting your user experience and and thus hurting your page views right they're they're leaving oh <laughs> paula says erasure has a cover of take a chance on me i didn't even realize that was an abba song oh <laughs> yeah it's all about the abba baby um my kiddo loves that movie what is it where it's all done in abba I had to, I went to the movie theaters and saw it. Um, you guys tell me, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I know all these ABBA songs. Okay. Anyway, it's just common sense. Use, use common sense. Mama Mia. Thank you, Paulette. Yes. Mama Mia played locally recently. And so I took my kiddo and their best friend to go see it. It was, I mean, for, it was pretty good. Okay. So number two, create and sell digital products. The income potential from creating and selling digital products is mind blowing. It's like a super secret I try to tell everybody I know about and they don't believe me. And even when I show them like I'm making money from it, they don't quite like they don't quite get how it's working. Like you know that GIF, the person kind of looking off into the distance and there's all the math equations around their head. That's what people look like when I like am like, see, I'm making money because I created this thing online and I sell it. <laughs> and, and they're like, is it a physical thing? No, it's not. Right. Um, yeah, the the income potential for creating and selling digital products is nuts. And you can do it with really like anything, you know, anything you know how to do and are willing to teach or willing to turn into a uh, Printable PDF can be a digital product. So according to Tech Jury, the U.S. e-learning market could grow by $12.81 billion between 2020 and 2024. Billion with a B. So the e-learning market is going up and to the right. And that hasn't stopped. And it's it's you know, the pandemic gave it a little push even. So if you want to get a piece of that sweet $12.81 billion pie, let's talk about what type of digital products you can create. Online courses, printables, like worksheets, planners, things like that. Ebooks, 
video workshops, audio books, other audio files. Um, I know Faith Mariah, this isn't necessarily like a digital product, but she has a private podcast for people who are in her high-end coaching program. Um, so, you know, get creative with the other type of audio you can do. Digital art, graphics, photographs. You can sell a lot of digital stuff online. And the beauty is you make it once and then you sell it over and over and over and over and over. I love it. Lisa says, yeah, I need to update my store because my sales have halted in digital products. Well, and that's another thing, right? You make the digital products and just like you have a strategy for monetizing your traffic, if you make a digital product, you have to have a strategy on how you're going to get eyeballs on it. And that could be a whole nother live. Maybe that'll be next week's live. Yeah. Lead generation. Yeah. So the cherry on the top with the digital products is really the passive income potential. So you create a product once you sell it over and over. It's my favorite way to monetize, but that's because I love doing this. <laughs> I love getting in front of the camera and teaching something, right? That's, that's where my magic is. And then as far as how much is it going to cost to create a course, that depends on what course hosting platform you use. If you are selling printables, like you could, you could really bare bones it with ConvertKit. So ConvertKit now uh, will like deliver for you. They'll, they have a deliverability piece that they didn't have before. So let's say, let's just pretend you create a pack of 20 homeschooling printables. You run Facebook ads to them, right? To a little sales page you put together wherever. It could be on ConvertKit, I think. <laughs> yeah, it could. You could have your landing page on ConvertKit. They're not the prettiest, but I've sold, I've sold stuff with ugly landing pages. <laughs> Anyway, uh, without getting to the weeds too much, you're running Facebook ads to your page, right? And then people are buying them. You deliver it via ConvertKit. You're also building your email list of people who are obviously interested in homeschooling. In the meantime, you can do it on a very bare bones, low budget, um, bootstrapping type process. Oh, nice. Right on. I have a $9 a month plan with Sendout, and that's super duper easy to use. Super duper. She's serious now. I love that. Yeah. Uh, so if you're thinking Kajabi, it's going to be really expensive because it's all in one, right? It's like 150 plus a month. 150 is the beginning. Kartra is like 99 a month. Podia's 39 a month, Teachables, 39 a month, Thinkific, 49 a month, and those are and up. And so Amy is saying here that Sendow is $9 a month. So boom, baby, if you really want to sell a digital product, you can do it on the cheap, at least in the beginning. It doesn't always have to be that way. And switching platforms, I'm not going to tell you it was easy, but it wasn't like a a huge giant pain in the ass that I would never ever go through again. I switched from Teachable to Kajabi and it was relatively painless enough. Okay. Um, how to create an online course. Again, that's a whole nother can of worms. Oh, Shopify. Shop Shopify. <laughs> Willow says Shopify has a cheap plan too. Thank you, Willow. Yeah. And, um, Shopify has its own benefits, right? There's, um, you, you get a online store. So the quickest way I have seen to make money with a blog actually leaves out the blogging part. You offer a coaching package and you do it via social media, but you, that means you got to go get on social media and find your people. So it's not, it's not just as simple as you put up a coaching package on your website and the people will come, right? Build it and they will not come. <laughs> Again, you have to have a plan for how are you going to get eyeballs on your offer? So 
if your end goal with your blog is to sell coaching packages, starting with blog posts might not be the right thing for you. It might not be the right thing. The right thing might be to go find your people. So what social media platform are your people hanging out on? And then offer your coaching on there. So start showing up, start helping people like I'm doing right now, right? Like I help people for free. You guys get to know, like, and trust me. And then you're willing to work with me because you know I'm not a con artist. So go get in front of your people. It might make more sense for you to front load the social media and then put the blog on the back burner. And if you want to get that sweet organic traffic later, it's much easier to do that once you have some income coming in and you can kind of take a breath, right? Yes, offering services is a fast way to while you build your blog. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So if you want to do that, you'll need a social media platform where the people you help hang out. Calendly or something like it. So Calendly allows you to book appointments and the free plan will work fine at first. With Calendly, you can do like one type of an appointment. Um, It's when you get like the multiple different types of of appointments that you want to book that you'll have to pay for it. PayPal, and then Zoom. And again, the free plan will work in most cases, especially when you're first starting. So you can bootstrap this. And that is the quickest way I have seen to make money with a blog. And you're not actually making money with the blog. You know what I'm saying? But then you can tend to the blog side on the back end. And that's what the income streams allow you to do. They free up your they free up that pressure, right? The I got to make money now pressure. It gives you options because when you are making business decisions from the energy of I need money now, you don't make the best business decisions, right? You make business decisions that are going to, that look like a quick win. And most of the time, what those do is they have you spinning your wheels for three months You go on this three-month-long tangent trying to do your quick win. It doesn't work. And then you lose those three months that you could have spent building up a strategy that is actually going to bring you income. So when you have that money coming in, it allows you, it frees you up to make better business decisions. So if you're looking at providing coaching, maybe you skip the blog for now, you go get in front of people, you get some clients, you get some income coming in and you can focus on the blog on the back end. Rebecca Forst just did this recently. I don't think Rebecca's here this morning. Hi, Rebecca. Good job. (laughs) And then at the end of every single post, live stream, whatever, pitch your coaching. It doesn't have to be a sleazy pitch, right? You can be like, if you loved this, you will love working with me. Book a free discovery call link in bio or whatever. Don't call it a discovery call. That's kind of overplayed. Come up with something cute, uh, whatever, you know, you could call it a book a free love your homeschooling life call with me link in bio. It doesn't have to be cheese ball. And just the more you practice saying it, it, it'll become automatic. You'll be like, oh, I'm wrapping up. I got to go into my quick elevator pitch. Boom, baby. Mini consult. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, mini consult. Yeah, depending on what it is. So yeah, and then you can send them to Calendly or whatever. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I've used Calendly. I think it's really user-friendly. And Bill, I'm using PayPal. Make them pay before you give them services. Okay, I've seen this happen too, right? So people will agree to a coaching package for three months long. And let's just say it's $500 a month. Get that stuff up front. Get the money up front. Because when you don't, 
and their refrigerator goes out, guess what they cut? Right? I've seen this happen to students. That's why I'm saying it. Okay, next idea, collaborate with brands. So when you collaborate with brands as a blogger, that means they pay you to write sponsored posts for them on your blog. So in short, brands leverage your audience and influence to sell more of their products. So, and then you get a paycheck. Woo -woo. <laughs> Super important though, if you write a sponsored post, you must by law disclose that it is a sponsored post at the top of your post. Just like your affiliate disclaimer needs to be at the top. It can't be buried. Um, it needs to be conspicuous, right? I do have a really good resource for you guys from fitnancials.com about brand collabs because I've never done them. I don't know a whole lot about them, but this person does. <laughs> so I'll drop that in there. Oh, Eddie, sorry. We don't allow haters in this group. Bye. <laughs> So if you're looking to do a collaboration, I'll drop that link to the financial site for you in the video description later. I'll update it. I'll let you guys know when I do that. And then Hootsuite also has a really good guide on Instagram influencer rates. And I will drop that in there later. Okay, next up is affiliate marketing. We all know what affiliate marketing is, right? We get a fancy little link from a company. We put it on our website. And then if somebody clicks on it and makes a purchase, we get a commission. So much like ads, monetizing a blog with affiliate marketing requires a large amount of traffic to really bring in the dough or at least like a consistent and sizable amount of traffic. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, like gigantic. So you recommend a product via special link and then you earn a commission when somebody buys said product with your link. Again, you need to put that disclaimer at the tippy top of your post. It needs to say something along the lines of this blog post may contain affiliate links and then you link it to your disclaimer somewhere else on your page, the disclaimer that's like 50,000 words long or whatever. I actually used a disclaimer generator. And then of course I had to like go in and tweak it because it was a generator, but I'll see if I can find that for you guys. Cause that worked really well. And again, I'll update the description later. And then of course, don't, don't drop an affiliate link for something that you don't really believe in, right? So uh, I'm an affiliate for the Stupid Simple SEO course. If I had not liked that course, then I wouldn't be recommending it to you. Don't, don't recommend crap. That's all it comes down to. <laughs> Um, but pretty much anything you like, you can find an affiliate program for. So 81% of all brands in the U.S. have affiliate programs. So head over to Google, type in whatever you want to sell, plus the word affiliate program, and I bet you, you will find one. Like 81%, holy shit balls, Batman. <laughs> all right, and then just like Willow said, Freelance blogging, so selling your services. Selling your services can be a really good way to bring in income before your blog is actually bringing in income. Oh, Willow says PayPal will protect the purchaser if they don't get the services they paid for. No one is protecting you if you don't get paid for your services. Oh, that's really interesting. Oh, good. Okay, so Lisa says, that's what I'm working on this year. Trying to grow my Instagram and TikTok and get sponsored posts. Good, Lisa. Um, okay, so Lisa, I'll drop those for you in the group later. Okay, so 65% of bloggers also work as freelance writers. 
y'all know Faith Mariah. She, I know she did a lot of work. I don't know if she was writing as a freelance blogger, but she actually did freelance work for bloggers that were much further along the road in their blogging journey than she was. And she got to learn from them while getting paid, while making money to pay for her blogging expenses while she was waiting for her blogging business to keep up with her blogging expenses. Uh, I do have other resources for you guys. I really like Writing Revolt. Uh, actually, I think she changed her name. But um, Writing Revolt, I don't know, she's really cool. Jordan is her name. And she teaches you how to get how to land freelance blog writing jobs. So really, she teaches like the pitching side of it instead of the writing side of it. Uh, Elna Kane also teaches about freelance blogging. And not only that, but that will get you really good at blogging really quickly, right? If you are writing tons of blog posts per week to make money, you are going to get much, much better at blog writing. So you're really setting yourself up for success. Okay, and then real quick, you can do subscription membership programs, blog flipping, you can host events, you can create a podcast for your blog. These are things you can use to monetize your blog. You can clean up with a podcast. <laughs> Just look at Pat Flynn. I'm sorry, who said that? What's a great, oh, great learning opportunity. Yeah, Amy. Um, yeah, working underneath bloggers who are further along than you are. Yeah, that's a that's an amazing learning opportunity and you're getting paid for it, right? It's like a paid internship. So what I really wanna leave you guys with is that it's not, like I know we all wanna want make money really quick, but that's not, that's not what blogging is. <laughs> Sorry, um, but it's not what blogging is. Blogging can provide you with truly passive income, right? It's front loaded. You do all the work in the beginning and then you reap the benefits later. But it's not, it's not what it gets sold as. If anybody is telling you that they can teach you a trick to make money like $10,000 a month in your first month blogging, they're probably just trying to sell you something. <laughs> Take that with a big fat chunk of salt. And if you guys ever need help like vetting an idea, drop it in the group. I'm happy to help you brainstorm it out. I'm a verbal processor. How about you guys? Yeah, I like to talk things out. So if y'all need help, like if you have an idea bubbling and you need help really fleshing it out, let us know. Drop it in the group. We'll help you out. Well, I hope this helps you and I hope you have some idea now of what you want to do to monetize your blog. It's all good. There's no wrong way to do it. Whatever feels aligned to you is what's right for you. Yeah, Lisa says I'm a verbal processor too. Yeah, I had a um, I had a boss that would let me just, I would call her and she would just let me talk until I verbal processed it out and then she would, <laughs> and then she would be like, okay, you done? I was like, yeah. Uh, Rachel Pedersen's SMU teaches you how to be a social media manager and her course is free right now. What? Really? Who said that? Oh, Willow. Hi, Rashonda. It's good to see you. Dang day job. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, that's really good to know, Willow. I'll include that in the link roundup. Yeah, lots of different things you can do for money. Sometimes we got to get creative and that's okay. It's not going to happen overnight. It takes as long as it takes. Again, stop telling yourself it's not happening fast enough. You'll burn yourself out. <laughs> All right, friends. Uh, don't forget. 
I'm hosting the Badass Blog Post Workshop next week. So come write a blog post live with me and then you get the free 20 page workbook with it too that has a blueprint in it. So the blueprint will give you the topic, give you prompts, give you templates, walk you step by step through writing a blog post and then we'll do it together. Will says that course is extremely intensive and even if you just want to learn a marketing course, learn marketing, it's a great course. Okay, that's really good to know. Rachel Pedersen, huh? Okay, thank you. All right, friends, have a great weekend and I will see you soon. Bye.